from his basement studio in Rockland, Ontario. It's the Alec McNorman Show. Hello, everybody, and welcome again to the Alec McNorman Show. This is episode 7 already, and I'm very excited to be bringing this to you. And the best part is, is today, it's just me. All me, no guests, no interviews, just like it was Eight weeks ago when I started this thing. Wow, eight weeks ago. Man, that seems like a long time. <laughs> Not really. Okay, moving on with the show. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is uh, it's, uh, I'm going to rehash a couple of old things. So, of course, um, we're going to be discussing COVID. Uh, we're going to be discussing uh, the gun ban again, as usual. Um, we're also going to discuss uh, things uh, for voting. And, uh, and then... Um, at the end of it, it will be Norm's rant, which, you know, keeping with the current times, it's going to be about this uh, latest uh, cop shooting in the States. Um, and so that should be a pretty good pretty good rant, and, uh, and that'll be the rant of the day. And then we'll move on, and uh, I am in the works right now of episode 8 will be another, another interview with a man who goes by many different names, but he'll always be the same to me. Cope Wintergreen will be my guest next week, so stay tuned for that, uh, and we'll catch up with him and his adventures in BC. Speaking of which, what a great segue, Norm. Why, thank you, Alec. What's going to happen now is I am going to concede. That's right. Western society, you have won, I have lost. And uh, I, I am I am putting in the flag. I'm waving the flag. That's right. <clears throat> you heard it here first, or maybe you saw it on Instagram or Facebook already. Linda and I are selling the house in Rockland, and we are going to jump in our RV and drive across this great country and see this country before the liberals fucking tear it apart. And... Um, you know, it's it's become plain, plain and clear as day to me that um, I've lost, the Conservatives lost, uh, there's no coming back, the Liberals are going to keep winning, and they're going to keep tearing this fucking country apart, so before we lose everything, Linda and I are going to go and, and, and view the country, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to stop off and North Bay, and then someplace up north, and then Winnipeg to see some friends, uh, someplace in Alberta, catch up with some friends, and I'm definitely spending a couple of days in Banff because I've never been there, and I've always wanted to go there. I've heard it's fantastic, and I just can't wait to get there. Uh, then let's see, oh no, I think we're stopping off in someplace in Saskatchewan too. Anyway, and then, uh, yeah, Alberta, and then BC, we're going to be making our winter home this year in a nice rented two-log cabin, just uh, um, in Parksville, British Columbia. And uh, as people are now starting to come out on Facebook, looks like I have some uh, friends out there that I'm going to be able to catch up with and have some great times. So, you know what? I'm super excited. Um, I'm kind of disappointed that I have to throw in the towel and just say, you know what, this is what it is. But this is a, a, a pretty good uh, compensation, uh, what do you call those things? Consolation prize. This is a pretty good consolation prize of being able to have the luxury to jump in our 1983 Winnebago and, uh, and after Josh Beauchamp has worked his magic on it, it'll get us across the country. We will overwinter in BC and then we will come back to the valley and live in a park model in Steamboat Bay just outside of Renfrew. So those are our plans. Um, and then of course uh, every winter will be someplace else. And in between there we'll be coming back of course to see Although Jared doesn't want me to drop her name any longer, my granddaughter will be coming back to visit her at Christmas and birthdays and all these other different wonderful things when we have to come home. Um, but yep, so summer is in Renfrew and winter's someplace warm. So um, in, a, in a sense, I'm, I'm kind of glad that, uh, that I lost this battle, but in a, on, an, on another sense... Um, I'm wondering how long I'll be able to do this because once the country is gone, I will no longer be able to live off my pensions. Um, so that has me a little bit concerned, but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. The government's always going to be here to take care of us, right? Yeah, right. Okay, speaking of which, 
Let's move on to topic number two. Okay, we're going to edit that out after. Topic number two. COVID. Yes, COVID, COVID, COVID. All COVID all the time. That's what you get here on the Alec McNorman show slash Canadian government slash what a shit show. But I'm not going to harsh too much on the Canadian government this time or the or the provincial government with how they're handling it. Um, there's a couple of things that I want to discuss. And, um, and uh, so basically the first thing I'd like to discuss is the vaccines. Once again, um, you know, we've been we've had the vaccines out now for a couple of a couple of weeks, couple of months now. I'm not going to discuss the shitty rollout that the government is doing, both provincial and federal. Um, but what I want to talk about is the vaccines themselves. And here's my question: I would like to very seriously know or have it explained to me somehow as to the only two vaccine uh, bases that we've ever used pre previously which based off one's a human adenovirus and the other is a uh, chimpanzee adenovirus base. How come those ones that we've been using for years uh, for, those, for those bases um, are having so much difficulty now with, with, this, with this COVID virus and yet the, the two brand new tech mRNA ones um, you know, don't seem to be having too many, uh, too many side effects or too many issues with um, I'm, I'm trying not to be a conspiracy theorist here, but uh, I'm going to throw it out there for the, for the topic of discussion. Um, it makes no sense to me that the, the, the bases that we've been using, the adenoviruses we've been using for vaccines for many years, all of a sudden seem to be throwing all these different clots and stuff at all uh, people and, and all this stuff. Yet the, the new tech stuff that we've never ever used before, that we rushed to market, got it out in four months, uh, seems to be having uh, pretty low side effects. Uh, interesting, interesting. So uh, do with that what you will. I just thought I'd bring it to your attention and uh, see if you uh, are thinking of the, along the same lines as me. But um, I'd, I would definitely like to do a little bit more research, and I still can't find anything that, uh, that would suggest uh, why all of a sudden these base uh, viruses, adenoviruses that we've used in the past are, are giving us so much trouble now. But the new... Technology seems to just be so wonderful. That's uh, interesting to me. The other thing I'd like to discuss about too is uh, with the vaccines and and is this concept of herd immunity. Now I realize it's been a while since I since I did my QO5 level PMED tech course, but I'm pretty sure that there was a couple of ways that you could get herd immunity. One was through vaccination, but the other one was also through a little thing that we like to call exposure. Now it's clear to me that we were having exposure. And, um, but yet we're only discussing herd immunity. Uh, so exposure really basically what it means is, is, uh, you know, you get, you get the, you get the, the virus, you get sick for a little bit. Uh, hopefully you don't get dead from it uh, as is happening with some people, unfortunately, but for the most part, most people are, are coming out of it on the other end, um, a little bit worse for wear, but alive nonetheless. Um, so therefore they should be having the antibodies. So there's another way of having herd immunity. So my question is, is why is all of the uh, media attention and government attention and the medical attention on the herd immunity caused by vaccine only and not by the antibodies carried by people that have already been exposed? Now, I understand there's the things for variants and stuff like that. But once again, the vaccines have no guarantee to be resistant to the uh, to the. Um, uh, mutations as well so you know once again I would just like to know it's like we're only having once again only having one side of the conversation or one portion of the conversation you know where is where do we stand on herd immunity from those who have had active cases of COVID that's all I want to know if somebody can explain that to me I'll be happy but I can't find any information anywhere on the the herd immunity achieved through exposure. So I'm going to keep looking for that. And if you can, uh, if anybody can help me, uh, you'll put me onto um, an essay or a paper or a periodical or whatever. Um, I would very much like to to read that. Okay, so there you go. So that's COVID. So once again, I you know not giving, uh, not going to go on any rants with regards to the 
the Trudeau government and all that being shitbirds and lying to the public about the vaccines and all this other stuff. Um, we're going to move on to the next one. And of course, the next topic is the gun ban and, and getting slaps on the wrist uh, for doing nothing. But yet the, the people that are out there breaking the law with gun crimes uh, go and have their day in court. Uh, they get a slap on the wrist and they're out and can and continue to do the same crimes. Yeah, that's uh, you know I, I I'm starting to see the link here that yeah you know taking away my guns is certainly gonna fucking stop that you know uh, my guns that are like I said in my safe behind a locked door behind a locked safe with trigger guards on the weapons themselves. Um, you know yeah that's. That's pretty much uh, where the concern is right there, people. Not the fucking Yahoo walking around uh, downtown Toronto packing an illegal fucking firearm that was brought in through the states, most likely statistically showing that it came in through one of the reservations across the United States-Canadian border. But, you know, let's not look at that stuff. Let's just look at the fact that, hey, I'm following the fucking laws. I've had the background checks done. I waited the fucking four months after my... I did my PAL course and all that stuff, but yeah, you know, I'm the fucking problem here, people. No, you know what? It's time for you fucking idiots to wake the fuck up and realize that you are being lied to, and I don't understand, like, I don't, I, I refuse to believe that Canadians are as stupid as they're portraying ourselves to be right now, but I don't see any other evidence to, su to suggest otherwise. We're about to, once again, elect this fucking moron back into power, because you like the fucking flowery words that he says, but yet he hasn't done absolutely fuck all for this country, except for the weed. Thank you very much for the weed. I've been uh, enjoying that uh, way more than I should sometimes, but uh, it's been great. But getting back to the guns. There are now, like, criminals are out there now, like, actually building guns. And, uh, you know, so this one thing that happened a little while ago where the, where the shooter... Um, you know, once again, a criminal wasn't able to buy, legally purchase a gun, so he was able to circumvent that through the internet, apparently, and, and get parts to a gun and put it together and, uh, and you know, and, and go out and cause that shooting spree, you know. like uh, So what you have there is you have a very motivated criminal. Um, once again, it was done illegally. The law did everything that they could to stop this guy from doing it. Uh, but you have some less than reputable businesses that would uh, still allow to, no questions asked, you know, send things to this guy. But I mean, if you look in Canada, like in Winnipeg, especially from everything that I'm seeing, um, you know, you don't even need to order these gun kits or whatever. There are people that are making guns um, and, and using them in street crime. And, and, you know, so again, if you honestly think that banning weapons and banning guns and taking them away from law-abiding citizens is the way to get rid of gun crime on the streets... Um, you're sadly mistaken, and I would say that you should probably seek psychiatric help because you're fucking crazy. And number two, um, the other thing that I would like to say about that escaped my mind, so we will move on to the third topic that we have about guns, and that is, my friends, I have found a new thing at the ranges that's out there called... Um, Single action shooting, uh, which seems to be pretty exciting. I'm going to be uh, joining up with the with one of the groups at the at the range, and uh, yeah, it looks like it's a lot of fun. You you get to engage uh, steel targets with uh, vintage weapons and following a, a scenario uh, right out of the old west. So it seems to be pretty cool, pretty exciting. I'm I'm uh, I'm excited to to look at that and uh, and and get some rounds down range. So if anybody has any vintage old single action uh, guns, pistols, shotguns, rifles, uh, you're looking to offload, uh, give me a, an email at the Alec McNorman Show at email.com. That's Alec McNorman Show at gmail.com. Did I say email.com? Holy jeez, I'm losing my mind. Okay, so what's the next topic? Yes, the next topic, voting. Once again, this brings me back to the conversation that I just had about how stupid Canadians are being, and I just don't understand it. So here's a couple of quotes that I would like to read to you. The, now, one of them, actually both of them are very famous, 
One you'll recognize right off the bat from uh, John Fitzper- Fitzgerald. Oh, fuck. Fitzpatrick Kennedy, I think was his name. Jeff K., whatever. That's not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. That's the first one. The second one is John fifteen thirteen, And it goes, I've actually modernized it for for everybody that's out there because we love touchy-feely things. So, greater love hath no people kind than this, that a people kind lay down their life for their people kind friends. So, why do I bring these up when I'm talking about voting? Well, it's become very fucking clear to me over the last couple of years that people are not voting for what's right for the country and that's what we should be looking for here we should be looking for what's right for the country what's 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 going to be the best thing for the greater good but no over the years what's happened is we've we've got these people that they've dug their heels in and it's what's in it for me i'm going to vote for and it doesn't matter if he's the most corrupt fucking vile piece of shit asshole on the planet i'm going to con- con- fucking continue to vote for this asshole because, you know, at least he's looking after my segment of society that that I enjoy. Well, good fucking for you. You know, let's not worry about the fact that while you're enjoying all these perks that the fucking government's given to you, there are other people out there that can't get fucking clean water or can't get um, food to places, um, can't afford their rent, can't afford their electricity, heat, hydro, stuff like that. But you know what? As long as you guys get to have your fucking, you know, things like mm, parades and fucking, you know, having the, the streets painted a certain color at taxpayer expense, you know, that's all awesome. Like, you know, those that money is much better used by fucking painting the streets fucking different colors as opposed to, you know, providing health care to... Uh, to the less infor- less fortunate people, or uh, you know what I'm what I'm starting to learn now is fucking dental care is extremely extremely expensive, man, and that should be a basic right. You should basically like everybody should have basic dental care and medical care and a f- and a place to call home and a roof over your head and a, and a, and uh, you know some and some fucking food on the table. You know that would be lovely. But no, let's go out and fucking you know put all these you know, spend millions of dollars on these fucking advertisements and posters and painting the fucking sidewalks and shit, you know, that's, that's a great, great, uh, use of, of my tax dollars, uh, that I would rather see going to, you know, maybe fixing the roads instead of painting them different colors, maybe, you know, having some low-income housing built, um, you know, and again, not in residential areas or business areas downtown, like, you know, build these places where it's not going to be, um, you know, fucking millions of dollars for people to, to try to pay rent to get in there and stuff like that. And it's just, it's just crazy. Like the stuff that this government is doing is just absolutely asinine. And, uh, but why are they doing that? Why are they doing that? Well, because you people are allowing them to do that. You keep voting for these fucking idiots and you, and you, and you, you try to make yourselves feel better because you're voting for these people that say nice, wonderful, warm, flowery things and yet are bringing this fucking country to its knees. To its knees. So, like I said, you win, I lost. You know, you guys can till continue to fucking, uh, you know, bring the country down or whatever. I'm going to hop in uh, the RV or the truck. We haven't decided yet. We're going to make our way across the country. We're going to visit as much as we can. We're going to see as much as we can. We're going to visit as many friends as we can. Uh, we're going to enjoy our time, um, while I still have some pension money left before the fucking government spends it all. And then, um, you know, and then we're going to see what happens after that, you know, let the chips fall where they may. But you know what? You guys keep voting this fucking moron in and keep making yourselves feel good about yourselves. And, you know, cause I've, you know, basically I've pretty much given up and, you know, you can have the country. It's yours. Um, I'm just going to be, you know, on the fringes of it. I'll just be living my life and enjoying the beautiful parks in British Columbia and, you know, and all the other various sites and scenes and sites that we're going to see across Canada. And I'm very excited. I've always wanted to do this and I'm really excited. Having said that, you will also be able to continue to listen to the podcast because I will be bringing my equipment with me 
and we will be having weekly podcasts still with our adventures across Canada, and it's going to be super awesome, and I cannot wait to have those for you. Well, like I said, it's just me talking today, and, you know, uh, we've discussed uh, the COVID things that, again, like I'd like you to to think about is, um, you know, why are the two adenovirus-based vaccines that we've been using as basis for vaccines for years all of a sudden an issue and uh, but yet the new technology that has never been trialed before except for this year uh, seems to be uh, outperforming uh, the the other ones so I'd, I'd really like to figure that out and also herd immunity um, what is going on Um, Are the people that are being exposed and have antibodies, are they or are they not considered to be part of the herd immunity? And if they are not, why not? Because that has been the standard for many, many years, if I recall correctly. So those are the two things that I want to talk about with COVID, with guns. I just want to reiterate yet again, leave the gun, leave the law-abiding gun toting, holding, whatever, citizens you know just let them do their thing let them enjoy their hunting let them enjoy their ranges you know let them keep their guns as long as they're safe and they're using them properly you know what if you don't like guns good for you who gives a fuck stay in your fucking cities and shit nobody cares but if you like guns and you use them properly um you know i think you should have every right to do that go to the range have some fun shoot some paper targets, maybe some steel, and, you know, and just have a little bit of fun and blow off a little bit of steam. If you're a piece of shit criminal who's using guns to commit crimes, um, or even if you're a piece of shit criminal who's using knives to commit crimes, or bats to use crime, commit crimes, um, you're still a piece of shit, you're still a criminal, so why don't you look at yourself and think, hmm, maybe I shouldn't be a fucking piece of shit criminal and I should actually get my act together. Um, but then again, that opens up a whole other kettle of fish, which is, who am I to tell other people how to live their lives? Exactly. So, there you go. All right, everybody, so that's all I have for right now, and, um, get ready for Norm's Rant. And now it's time for Norm's Rant. Well, everybody, here we are again. Once again, we have another one of these fucking say his name, say her name bullshit things. You know what? Fuck it. Say my name. My name is Norman Hughes. I am a law-abiding citizen. I know from experience, and yes, people are going to say it's because of my white privilege, whatever. The two times that I have been arrested in my life, I did not resist arrest. I fucking, and even though I was completely fucking hammered both times, I still had the wherewithal to fucking put my hands up when the cop fucking had his gun out and said, fucking put your hands up, lay on the ground, spread your hands, fucking, you know, I'm taking your hand, hand behind your neck, back, fucking blah, 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 cuff one, cuff two, up with him, into the back of the car, and then go get thrown in jail, and then, you know, let the chips fall where they may. I didn't get shot. I didn't get shot, I didn't get beat, I, I fucking complied, and, and, if, and if you think that the only reason that that happened in two different cities in Ontario with two different complete police officers, if you think that the only reason that I didn't get fucking shot is because I'm white, I got some fucking news for you, I think you're full of shit. What I did do was comply, and I fucking did everything that they said to do, both times. And, and both times I was fucking drawn down on. So, all I'm saying is like, you know, like yes, in this situation, there was a, a, an unfortunate event that happened where the officer went to pull her taser and pulled her gun instead and shot the young man in question. But the young man in question wasn't just doing what I just described. He wasn't fucking following orders. Actually, he was. Up until they came back over the radio and said, oh, hey, yeah, this routine traffic stop has now turned into uh, this man has outstanding outstanding warrants for his arrest. 
meaning it's time to fucking take him into custody and make him face up for the fucking criminal acts that he's done. So once he realizes, motherfucker, that's it, I'm going to go fucking into jail potentially for quite a bit of time. Then he decides, oh, I'm going to try to make a run for it, which is a great fucking idea. When you've got three cops sitting right there, you've already got one fucking hand in cuffs, but yet you're going to decide to make a fucking run for it and think that nothing's going to happen to you. So the worst case that should have happened in that, like, even though he decided to make that fucking, that, that choice for whatever reason, you know, yes, he should have been tased. Okay, I'll give you that. But the cop fucked up and shot him. And if anybody thinks that it was done maliciously, watch the fucking video. Because you can tell right off the bat, as soon as she shoots, she fucking says, oh, fuck. And then says, I shot him. Oh, my God, I shot him. Shit. You know, or words to that effect. If you fucking think that that's worth marching up and down and, and fucking saying that every cop is a fucking criminal and all they're doing is going around hunting young black men... Even after you've seen that video and you know, like, you can actually see it, it's on fucking CNN, and even CNN isn't even trying to fucking, you know, sh sh sugarcoat it, I don't think. I think they actually realized that, holy fuck, like, this guy, all he had to do was give his other hand, give his right hand, and fucking put, take the cuffs, and get put in the car. And if everybody, now people are going to say, well, you know, he was afraid it was in Minnesota, and, you know, they got the George Floyd thing case happening and you know they were probably going to take him into uh into the jail and beat the shit out of him or you know they probably would have killed him anyway you know what fuck you i don't believe that i believe 100 percent that the majority of cops out there are good <clears throat> i believe that they are um what's the word i'm looking for faithful to the oath that they have taken to serve and to protect and if and i refuse to believe that these cops who were being videotaped at the time are going to automatically take this guy after they've cuffed him and put him in in the car and taken him for booking uh, would have, you know, shot this kid any other way. So, you know what? All I got to say is, like, it's time for people to stop fucking trying to move these agendas and push these things forward and just say, you know, accept things as they are. This was a tragedy. I'm not going to try to belittle that. But for people to turn around and sit there and, and, and talk about, you know, how funny this guy was and how great of a father he was and all that stuff, and he probably was. You know what? There's two sides to everybody, you know? Some people have, have good sides and some bad sides, and you've seen it all through, you know, history. You've seen it in TV shows, you've seen it in movies, you've seen it everywhere, where, you know, people are, you know, the, the doting family man, but, but also potentially, um, you know, a wee bit of a criminal on the other side. One does not... It's not mutually, exclu mutually exclusive. You can be a good father and a, and a jokester and a, and a prankster and also a fucking criminal. And to me, it looks like that's what's happening in this case. And like I said, it was a tragedy, but I can't fucking stress it enough, people. I don't think that cops are going around looking for people to fucking shoot for no reason, especially in this case. So go ahead with your rioting and your fucking Black Lives Matters and all that shit. And this is, again, another reason why I'm just going to fucking go off into the sunset and sit by my campfires at night and fucking drink beer and smoke a little bit of weed. Because, again, I, I just can't seem to be able to get through to fucking highly educated people that, especially in this case, in this video, people are still trying to see shit that isn't there. It's fucking black and white. Watch the fucking video, see what happens, and then tell me that there's nobody else to blame for that incident other than the young man who was being fucking pulled over. Anyway, that's what I got to say. So once again, if you're going to get fucking pulled over, regardless of what color you are, for the love of God, comply and let the fucking justice system work in your favor. Okay? Please. Stop fucking doing stupid shit, especially when you've already got one hand in cuffs for fuck's sakes. Everybody, that's Norm's rant. And like I like to say um, at the end of these rants and the shows, um, number one, please, if you feel like you want to uh, make any comments, because I haven't had any comments since that last asshole decided that he wanted to try to call me out and fucking failed miserably, Please send stuff to alecmcnormanshow at gmail.com and I was glad to, uh, you know, have a little bit of a conversation because right now I'm feeling these are one-way conversations and I don't like that. I would really like to get some opinion from people 
uh, you know, and especially if you have a, an ant, like a, a, an anti view to what I am saying, I would love to hear from you so we can discuss because I would, that's what I'm doing this podcast for is I want to hear from you. So as I've said before, uh, like the meme says from the Dalai Lama, be kind to everyone when you can, but have a plan to kill everybody in the room. Okay, I'll see you guys next week with my good friend Cope Wintergreen. Take care, everybody.